Okay, we're going to start um, since we have a forum and be recorded for Raleigh Community Cable TV. We want to welcome Chief Roderick, who's here to talk to us about two things. Yeah. Two things. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a little easy to refer. I got an email from one of your uh, associates about uh, something to do with the emergency management. Uh, I guess we try to go over that. She said that they're going to ask some questions because I didn't take the email with them, so I don't remember exactly what she wanted to know. But uh, I guess she tried to do a continuity of operation plan or something like that. And we can answer, I can answer any questions you might have if it pertains to emergency management. And uh, if you don't have anything, go around to the next thing, which is what I really ask them. But, you know, if you have any questions about that, uh, emergency continuity of operation. I can give you as much information as I can. And if I don't have the answer, I can get the answer for you. Is that, is that Janet? Yeah, so right. Janet P, the art chair, right. uh, emailed and asked about what's referred to as a command center. Yeah, EOC, emergency e operations. Exactly. Yeah. So where can we go and operate in the instance of an emergency um, somewhere, you know, safe um, and far enough away, but not so far that we, you know, can't operate um, and salvage items as needed. So you had responded back with the fire department and the police department. Right, that's where, depending, a lot of variables would play into, we don't have a permanent emergency right. operations center, but we have operated out of the training room in the police department, and we have operated out of the training room in the fire department. And depending on where, what part of the town is being affected the most is where we have an EOC, right. and um, in the event that we had something that really uh, involved all town departments, we would have a representative show up at the EOC uh, and help with anything. Um, short of any damage happening to the building, uh, how much input we would put into you know a town-wide problem, uh, I, I wouldn't know the answer to it. However. If you have someone that's willing to participate, they could, at the very least, help with other you know, other things that we have to deal with, telephone calls and what have you. Right, and, and that's all we'd be looking for is a place where we have a phone line mm -hmm. where we can prepare documentation and yeah. communicate. One of the things that I would strongly suggest to you, if you haven't done so already, is in the event that something happens to the building, you have a plan in place to deal with that so that you can continue operating. Or if you have um, uh, some fire happens in the building, all your report records and all that, or, or at least in a couple of different places, whether it's uh, a phone drive in uh, the librarian's home, uh, a phone drive in the chairman of the library trustees, or even if you have one of those cloud services where you all your records are kept. Having it in a couple of different places would be beneficial in the event that something happens in the building here. Or uh, your computer system, you right. have ways of ret retrieving the documentation. That's a good point. Insurance records and things like that. Yes. Um, it always happens in a couple of different places. And I'll use, for example, in the fire department, our database, we have it keep in three different places. And it's backed up every week. So it all back up. All our places, the things that we had brought on the thumb drive, we've got a little tech over there. But all three of them are done at the same time. And there's one kept at someone's house, one kept in the station. Um, so we can always go back, but plus all our computers have we've done hard drives on them that back up every day. So we can try to keep as much of our information as possible. And that's something that you should do. Um, and, and probably nowadays having an off-site cloud system probably the best thing. Right. Uh, and it costs money, of course, but you can do it on low tech on the thumb drives. You know, yeah, well, there's no monthly fee for that. There's no monthly <laughs> fee for that, and they're pretty right. cheap. You know, you right. can get a pretty big one for a short amount of money. And if you put four of them, you this, you always got to have them. They do go bad. Um, always have four that you do the back. Um, so that would help out a lot with, you, you'd be able to hit the road running if something happened here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you wouldn't be completely
completely lost. I mean, the books and all that, it's another story, but um, a lot of your records, which you would need. Anything that we may have on the time. Right. Okay. So I'm just curious to know, I've, I've never been to the fire department. Um, uh, it's very the one. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder, um, you know, because of its vicinity to the library, I almost wanted to put the police department first. You know, just because it's close enough, but you know, on the other side of Route One. Right. Um, but which location has more space? If it was to be an event that affected other departments. Um, probably the police station has a little bit more space yeah. parking wise. You, okay. you have the Redfield parking that you can utilize, so that probably a little bit better situated. That we're tight over there. Um, right. You know, if you found the post office, you know how tight it is. Over Right. Uh, so the police station would probably be where we would do more of it than the fire station. Okay. But so that would be a closer. But and this would maybe if it was something that affected only the library, mm -hmm. that might be suitable. It could be suitable. We could, okay. You know, um, if the town hall is still operational, there's a place that could be used. Center school. We have enough town facilities that we could get. You know. So we could put town hall and center school. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can use them also. As a base of operation, you know, it may not be perfect, but okay. um, you know, this is out of all the buildings, the better uh, for a lot of reasons uh, because it's newer, uh, it's got better fire protection systems and stuff like that. So, if something was going to go wrong, it'd probably be at the other buildings. Okay. <laughs> right. But um, you know, we, we can find a spot for you to operate. Okay, I think that was the gist of, of Janice. Right. But definitely think about electronic backups, and if you haven't converted all your files to electronic, or you know, it would be a good idea to start making PDFs of everything, and, uh, or microfishing, or whatever, to, to have electronic so that in the event that the hard copies are destroyed yeah. and you, you have a record of them. Yeah, I know this is a hot topic right now with parking, Sandy. Uh, yeah. I never and, thought or never imagined they'd be affected um, oh, in yeah. title search. So. Uh, and, and a lot of things, uh, I mean, my checking, uh, I have Ipswich. No, uh, they changed the name. I don't know. First Ipswich. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that they didn't print all their the, the statements. Oh, I they see they that. Came from, yeah. yeah. The same um, happened in the institution. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, it, it's, the more we've got electronic, you know, sometimes you wonder, but so paper documents, if they get wet, they're ruined. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them are irretrievable. Right. Um, but that's what you should be looking at if you haven't done so already, start coming up with a plan so that in the event that something happens, you can still operate. Okay. That's a big thing in emergency management. Not everybody does it, though. We're fortunate that we do have a tool that um, kind of is a an easy way to develop a disaster plan, so that's what mm -hmm. we're in the process of, of yeah. developing now. Um, just no, that's so that good. You should be uh, uh, congratulated in doing that because a lot of towns, uh, for a lot of different reasons, uh, choose uh, haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is monetary, but a lot of it is, it is overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're a bigger operation, there's more stuff to deal with. Okay? It, it can be. If you're really not into it or, or, or well versed in it, it could be a very daunting task. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay. The reason I asked about here <laughs> is, uh, as you were well aware, uh, the town of Raleigh was able to secure a piece of steel from the World Trade Center, and uh, on September, oh God, I don't remember that. It was the eighth. We had a um, rededication of the uh, memorial on the common of uh, Pleasant and Cross Street. And uh, one of the, the stipulations that was given to us by the New York City Fire Department was that we have a um, component of this thing where people would have a chance to go and learn about uh, what happened that day. And uh, one of the things that we did to start the whole thing was we involved the fifth and sixth graders at Pine Grove uh, School um, and had a poetry contest, in uh, which we had 45 um, kids.
kids uh, submit poems, which I thought was great. Uh, it was very difficult to pick the winner, but I did think we picked the best one. Uh, and her fellas, a uh, poem is uh, in, in a bronze plaque on the memorial now. Um, one of the things that we, uh, Bob Mary, uh, one of the selectmen, Reverend Gopi, and I, who were on the committee, uh, were looking to do is to try to see if we can find a place in the library to have like a permanent display of the letters from uh, Senator Kerry and Brown. And um, it, w it won't be a letter from uh, Congressman Tierney because he was here and did his thing, but we can have a uh, transcript of what he'd written, uh, of what he said to kind of display for future generations of, of the town to make sure that the Trentinis and Lori Olson here aren't forgotten and who they were and they were a vital part of the community when they lived here. And, and, and so that other, also other generations won't forget what happened on that day in 2001. Um, what I, one of the goals that we're looking to do is to have all the poems in the book which we're in the process of putting together right now. And we're a little bit behind on that. I was hoping to have it all done by now. But we're going to have some uh, hardbound books made, and the library is going to receive one of them, so you can put it into um, you know, the general circulation for people to look at, and have all the kids' poems in it, uh, and kind of lead up what brought us to getting a piece of steel in the process of uh, coming up with the, uh, the uh, extra monument behind the the monument that was there already. Um, and, and we thought, uh, and we'd also want to put, the, there's a piece of marble uh, that came from the, one of the lobbies, I think the second tower, that Reverend Hagopian was able to get when he was uh, volunteering uh, down at, at Ground Zero. Uh, that's on the wall of the auditorium right now. But nobody really goes up there, and so it's not really seen. So we, we, we think the library would be the most logical place to have something because people come here and should have turned it off. <laughs> it's got an email, um, but uh, people have a chance to look at it and see that's uh, you know a marvel. We have some shavings from the steel when we put it on the on the uh, monument that we're going to have in it. Um, we have a, an extra challenge point, which is similar to the one that's in the on the monument itself. And I also have the, um, I don't know what the board looks like, um, but the, the poem, we had a plastic plaque made up for the, the dedication because the real one wasn't done yet. But we would like to have all that in this um, display area. Um, I'm speaking for Bob and, and the Reverend. Uh, we're not asking for a lot of space, but some place that we can kind of have some of the stuff on display by like using a wall and maybe a little table or something like that. And we felt the library was the best place to do it because we have a lot of kids coming in here, uh, a lot of parents, um, and there would be a better chance for the people to see it and really understand how much the kids really got into doing this whole thing. Um, again, like I said, I was very amazed about uh, most of them, if they were born, they were very young when it happened. But they took a lot of time. They were very well um, educated as to what happened that day. And we just want to make sure that that continues to happen as we get further and further away from 9-11. So uh, that's why I'm here tonight to ask for some space to, for a display. And it would be tasteful. Um, uh, when we did the presentation to Pine Grove, we made sure that there was no blood and gore or anything like that. And it would be the same way here. Uh, it would be very tasteful. We'll deal with the, the day and not all the other uh, you know, unpleasant things that came along with it. Um, we, the PowerPoint presentation that we did for the kids, uh, Chris Neal put on the uh, school website so all the parents would get to see. Uh, and I think there was one negative comment out of all the hits that they had on it. Uh, we, we made sure that it was not gory uh, and dealt with the facts. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I don't have a lot to show you. I can show you the letters and stuff like that, but uh, it, we're not talking a lot of big stuff. It's just, you know, the, the uh, 
the picture box, it's got the grant, a marble in it, some of the shavings, a uh, copy of the, uh, you know, the, um, the copy of the poem in, in the letters and, and stuff like that, and the poems. We would kind of put it into something that people can leaf through it and, and kind of reflect. And are you thinking that this would be a permanent? I display? would like to see this permanent, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it, it, even if it's something that comes out every once in a while, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I could ask, <laughs> but I can't. You know, it, 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 whatever you can do for us would be great. But it would be nice to see a permanent display. I'm just thinking because you had mentioned something on a table, and I'm thinking if it's going to be something permanent, I'd want to make sure that it's people could you know pick it up, move it around. I'm thinking when we had the Jewett necklace that we wanted to make sure it was secure, and I think this even more so. We want yeah. to make sure that it couldn't be yeah. treated poorly. We would. The, the, I think we've got some money left over from. When we ask for donations to help with uh, um, doing this, we could make some kind of a case to put the stuff in. Um, you know, it all depends on how much space we can get. You know, we would kind of tailor it to whatever space you can give us, um, and uh, come up with a plan. We would present it to you before we did it, so you, you'd have a, some a visual to look at as to what we're kind of looking for. Um, I can't really do much more than give you an idea of what we're right. going to do right now. Because I don't know what we could, how much space we'd be able to get. So uh, to plan something would kind of hard. So it's two friend letters. It would be text of a speech. Uh, it would be bonds. yeah. The, we would be a, um, Senator Terry, Senator Brown. Uh, it would be. Um, Senator Tarr's speech, we have a, a copy of what he said. Um, we would have a, a copy of what Congressman Tierney said. We have a letter from Governor Patrick. Um, so those might be in a binder. In a binder, binder, yeah. Um, what I would probably do with those is make good copies of them and keep, we would like to keep the originals in an archive somewhere so we can uh, keep them. Uh, but yeah, it would be a book and maybe a copy of the book as to you know what 9/11 was about, uh, what we did to memorialize it, and um, pictures of the kids in front of the ladder truck with the steel, um, and copies of the poems, uh, which is kind of like what it's all about because he's, you know the kids are wrote them, you know, and uh, but that's what we're looking for. It'd be a book and you know somebody like the coin and, and, and the granite, I mean the marble and all that, would be little pieces that we could hang on the wall behind it or something in picture frames. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, but that's the idea I'm having. Uh, nothing we are not expecting a whole wall, you know, a whole side or a big we just don't have a lot to do. But something small that people can go look at and say, oh geez, you know, and leaf through it and kinda maybe get them interested into looking more into what happened, what led up to it and what happened afterwards. The letters, um, as well as the poems, would like they be laminated? If yeah, we probably, what we do is make copies of all of them right. and laminate them, you know, probably to put two, you know, so make not too big, but, you know, front and back, and then they can leave through and read the, um, the, the poems and the letters and stuff like that. And did you say, I apologize, 45 poems? About 45, yeah. Wow. That must have been tough. It was. Uh, it, it was. Um, they all were good. There were some that were better than others, but any one of them would have been perfect on me. But the one we picked, I think, really um, wrapped the whole thing together very nicely. And uh, you know, she should be proud of it. She did a good job. And um, you know, every time I've seen her, I told her that. She did a very good job and in reading it in front of everybody. Uh, we had a good turnout that day. It was over 100 people and it was like, wow. Didn't expect that many people. You know, we were looking, if we had 50, we'd be happy. Um, just because of the time and a lot. We had over 100 people. And we didn't have enough programs for everybody. But, um, so that's, that, that's what we're looking for. 
You mentioned that the poems are bound in a book. We're are going there to. Uh, yeah, there's going to be several hard copies made. All the kids are going to get one that's kind of spiral bound, so they'll have a copy of it, the, the ones that uh, submitted the poems. Um, but we're going to have some more permanently bound ones. Um, one will go to the town hall, one will come here, one will go to the library and the school, one will go to the fire department, and then the other one is going to go to the New York City fire department. Uh, because they have a collection of all the different monuments, memorials that were made um, from the steel that they gave, gave out. And they, they have a big uh, display down in um, uh, Randall's Island in their fire academy. And that's where the book will end up going and you know, being their big 9-11 uh, memorial. Um, I talked to the guy that, that gave us the steel. Um, he's very excited. Can't wait to see the finished book. Because I showed him a link to the uh, video of the dedication. Uh, I was hoping to have a, something to show you on that yet, but uh, my other two um, uh, members of the committee are a little bit slow on their part of <laughs> what the, their reflection of what we did. And as soon as they get that stuff together, we'll have the book pretty much finished at that point. So I was hoping to have something to show you on that, but it's not done yet. A, a copy of the video for the library collection would be that we can too. we can manage that. Yeah, we can get that uh, through community access, mm -hmm. or I can get a from one of my guys that mm -hmm. took the video of it too. But yes, that that would be something that we can do very easily, and that could be you know we can link it on the computer somewhere that people can watch it. Mm -hmm. Which is a pretty nice ceremony, too. And we didn't arrange the plane to fly overhead at all. And that was a scary moment. <laughs> so I think we'll probably want to maybe walk around the building just yeah, with that sure. in mind. That's what I was thinking, too. You know, what would work, how, yeah. where. And then if you get back to us, and then we can come up with a plan of what we'd like to do and present it to you. And if everybody likes it, we forward. But I appreciate the, uh, uh, the opportunity to ask you, number one, and I appreciate all you can do to help us carry this uh, final part of this project out. And so we can finally move on to other things. It's been over a year since we started doing this. And, uh, we're almost there now. The big part was getting the memorial done. Uh, I, for a while I didn't think that was ever going to happen. <laughs> and then finally everything came together and worked out really nice. I saw slides and I wasn't able to be at the dedication, but I saw slides of it and it was a huge crowd. And I can't imagine how they all, where they all were when you imagine the site. But yeah, was, well what we ended up doing was close and pleasant and cross street down, except the local traffic and everybody was all over. Yeah. You know, wherever there was a spot. And it was pretty much in the apex of the um, common, it was very congregated mostly. But then we had the trucks in the background, and uh, it, it, uh, it came out really well. It really did. And, and the crowd, I couldn't ask for a better. Better and a beautiful day yeah. on top of it all. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you, you wonder, you plan these things, and then it was a really lousy day. And, but the, you know, it was a nice, fairly warm day, and a little breezy, but it was okay. <laughs> so. I'm thinking if we're able to find a really high traffic place to put this, we should have like an open house or something to advertise it. Should the outreach committee sort of work on like trying to put it together or is that I, I mean I, I don't know about the open house idea, but like, I, I wouldn't have a problem. Invite with the it. kids' parents. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'd be willing to participate. Something to highlight the fact yeah. that it's in addition to the library. As yeah, well I'm sure. Sort of you know, speaking for Bob and the Reverend, I'm sure they'd be happy to participate in it. So, um, but if yeah, we'd be uh, we'd be willing be willing participants in that if it's what you choose to do. Okay. All right, then let's. We can try to identify some places and then okay. we can go back to you because it sounds kind of like you're not sure exactly what it's going to end up with right. until so, you know how much space. And right, and then we can work it out, yeah. the details out of how we're going to present it, and then mm -hmm. we'll present.
present, we'll come back to you and present it to you so that you have a good idea of what we're talking about. And then you can say yes or no, or you can have it if you do it this way. Sure. That'd be great. All right, great. Thank you for thinking of us. Well, I, I, I have to say, I like when people realize how much traffic we have here because well, we yeah. really do. <laughs> My two kids spend a lot of time here. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I, I do get to see that there is quite a bit of activity around here. And even when we have meetings for the fire station committee, you know, you get to see people coming in and acting a lot. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's, this is the place to put it. Of, over any other place in town. This is where, you know, the resources are here to look into what happened, you know, maybe find out a little bit more, at least, right. you know, better than town hall or a fire station, or where there's not, you know, that there's the opportunity to see it any, most times. Right. So, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank and if you have any other questions on the Continuity of operations, so don't hesitate to call. Okay. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Time. Have a good night. Hopefully, you won't get my knees cracked. <laughs> <laughs>
Statistics uh, slightly down in this October versus next up to last October, but minimal 2.18% for CERCs, 0.55% of patron counts. Uh, programs, we recently had year-end tax planning with six attendees. Margo Burke uh, will be back on Saturday, some 15th at 10 a.m. for estate planning. Our next free computer classes for seniors are going to be on social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. That class is full of the waiting list. And we have a meditation teacher, Jay Carlin's, um, coming back. He spoke once before at the library, and this talk is going to be on Stay Sane for the Holidays. If I didn't say already, that's Tuesday, December 4th from 7 to 8. And we just got news about half an hour ago that the Friends approved a program Yes. Uh, Michelle has arranged an author visit by uh, illust I should say author visit illustrator visit right both he's, he's both right he's an author illustrator his name is Matt Tavares his he has a book that he illustrated that's just coming out now on Helen Keller uh, most recently his book that he wrote was There Goes Ted Williams the greatest hitter who ever lived. But he's also illustrated some Christmas books, and he's going, on December 8th, he's going to read those books. He's going to do an illustration demonstration. The artwork, which is created, will stay here in the library. We'll own that, so we can hang that and display it, or we can bring it out at Christmas if it's Christmas themed. Um, and then while he's doing a signing, a book signing, we will have the children do a decorate your own gingerbread man because one of the books that he illustrated is Gingerbread Pirates. So it's going to be interactive. It's going to be two hours long. It's December 8th at 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And I'm very excited about it. And he has worked with us to make sure that he can come into our schedule. Can work with our budget and he's very he seems very excited to be here and um, and we'll be here for two hours so I'm thrilled that the friends approve that and just to interject Pam had already mentioned Margot Burke will be here the last time she did this presentation on estate planning she had 50 people in this room and they were all amazed and very excited about her program so I'm expecting another good crowd for that. Um, we'll be advertising that as well. The final note in my report is that, um, as I think you heard Chief and I talking about earlier, eight members of our staff got certified in CPR and AED. Um, the rest of the staff, who were certified two years ago, will attend a refresher class next week. I'm sorry, first AED? CPR. Are there any questions on the directors? Can I have a motion? Make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Is there anything that stands out on the budget that you think we need to focus on? Um, I do you want to mention, I think um, I mentioned last month that the office supply line was mostly spent and that was because I put a charge in there that was later transferred to the revolving account and that's because when it came time to renew our uh, service contract for the public copier, there was not enough money in the revolving account at that time and that account has since been built back up. So that line is now accurate. Other than that, you know, we're quickly approaching halfway through the fiscal year, and I don't see anything that's, that's not on track. And Pam, in regards to the water bill, um, we received... So the water department did not have time at their last meeting to address the payments. Okay. Okay, so... Um, do we have a plan for the summer? Or I guess that'll be a new budget cycle. 
We don't have a plan, no. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> before next summer, we'll have to figure out what about the spring. Well, we have to figure out if there's an affordable way to, to water the lawn. Right. If there's not, we just have brown grass like everybody else. I mean, or we decide it's a priority to have green grass and we need a lot more money to, to, to care for it. Okay. Um, but, I mean, that, yeah, that would depend. I mean, and that's it's tricky with the mowing too because it's the fiscal year ends right in the middle of your season. Right. So you have to kind of spread it out into both fiscal years. Yeah. Are there any questions on the budget? Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make that motion. We can accept the budget as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. On old business, <clears throat> an update on the staff luncheon. We, um, we pretty, the menus pretty much finalized so far. There's 16 people who have indicated they're coming. We're, I'm still waiting for 12 people to RSVP. So if you're one of those who hasn't yet, please let me know. I'll be there. <laughs> um, we're doing it with a combination of um, donations from people who are going to bring food and um, catering from Brown House of Pizza. And then supplies from Market Basket, so we're able to, I think, do a good job. And the friends did agree to co-sponsor. And the friends are co-sponsoring, so that'll it'll be 50-50 from board funds and the friends fund. So, so we're excited about that. But please, if you haven't RSVP yet, please do so. And just to remind everyone, it's December 1st at 2 o'clock. We also have our action items from the last meeting. Erin and I split thank you notes. Um, one to Joe Perry and to David Masher for their service on the board, and then also to Rob Pondelli for his service when he was our librarian here. Um, I, I guess we can pass these around and have everyone read them. But I think, um, I guess we can have a conversation if we should each sign it or just have someone sign it on behalf of the board and we can talk about what you guys think is that. I'll say it's a little bit I think it'd be better if we all sign it. Yeah, nice. We don't want it too formal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Individual touch, but it makes a difference. Sure. So then, no one has any changes to make to them tonight. Those of us that are here can sign them and then probably just leave them in Pam's office and as those who aren't here tonight come in, they can sign them. Is that the same one that Aaron emailed? The same copy? I emailed um, <clears throat> the one to David and Joe, which I to. This, one. this is for our That's right. Michelle and I got an email. So, Phil, you read these in Aaron's email? Yes. So you can pass your data. Okay. I was just asking if there's any changes. To yeah. This. Oh, I just didn't know if I should send it down. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was the same thing. Oh, 
So I think everyone, everyone has read Joe's. Does anyone have any suggestions, changes? Right, we can sign up. We can save and to sign after the meeting. Everyone's read Rob's. Any changes? Everyone has read David's. Any changes? Okay, then we can sign you all afterwards. We won't take time to do it now. Thank you for writing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, now we're moving on to the websites and the library website update. Um, I didn't really do any other research other than send a message to the director's listserv asking who had a WordPress website and how they made it and what it cost, which I summarized for you. I do have some comments um, that Janet made knowing she wasn't going to be here. Um, basically, she likes the Manchester one best. None of, uh, and I have to say, my favorites were probably Flint Memorial and Wakefield. Um, I mean, I have some notes on things I specifically did like about where certain things were or the type of photographs they used, but that's, you know, um, details to be figured down the road. So did everybody else get a chance to look at the sites that I suggested we review and have any Anything else to share about that? I didn't get a chance to look at all of them, but I'm kind of on the same page as you. I saw different things that I liked, like um, Amesbury has a calendar right on the front that I, I like. I find sometimes when I, we look on ours, you have to kind of search for what's going on versus what's an announcement to just have a place where it says, here's our events. And that's something that I made a note of. Most of the sites have, you know, on their, what is this, right hand margin, something, they have either their Facebook feed, or they have a calendar, or they have quick links, or so I made a note to think about like, what, is, what needs to say on the first page all the time. Yeah, we want to highlight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, it looks like the Manchester one is very expensive. And she didn't really specify what, what, what else for. was involved in that ridiculous fee. <laughs> What did you like about Wakefield? Um, <clears throat> I think mostly the feel of it, the color scheme. Um, there were some things I didn't like. For one thing, they had a, on some of the pages there's a scroll in the middle. Mm. And it, yeah. Um, Georgetown did kind of look homemade. I agree with Janet on that. Um, Groveland. The pictures were very generic and posed. Um, the Flint one, I liked how things were organized and the navigation. I like when there, when your nav bar has drop down menus right there. Like I just think that's a good way mm -hmm. to approach getting your content organized. So. Your notes is we are paying him. Who is the him? Um, this TK Rose, I guess that's his company. So he's still available to do it. Just for that. Um, no, I think I think that's sort of what he does. Yeah. I didn't look too much into um, the creators, but obviously. You know, th those websites are here too to get a sense of their business and what they do and who their clients are. I do like Middleton also, but for the same reasons I like the calendar. It, it just looks more I, modern. I don't like that the nav bar is on top of the header. I would put it underneath the header. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So above Flint Memorial Library has the home services represented right. on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so these are probably details that we could work with whomever exactly. we hire. Yeah. Um, unless 
someone has a standard template that they just put our information in, which probably isn't someone that we want to go with. So his name, Aaron's Tom, uh, he, sorry, his Tom Rose, Aaron just found it. So it's TK, the, it's TK, TK Rose, Rose. yeah. So, I mean, if nobody has any strong feelings either way, I can reach out to Tom Rose of TK Rose and ask him to take a look at our site and give us maybe an, an estimate or a rundown of what the process is, how we collaborate to get our, our content reposted in a new format. And make it easier for our patrons to, to see where to go for mm -hmm. certain information quickly. Now, we'll, we need to decide where we're going to keep our server, like if we're going to have it on VLC or go down, or is that something that we can well, decide? Well, that's, that's interesting because um, the Flint reboot just happened a few weeks ago, and at the time, they were waiting on someone at VLC who was on vacation, which I was confused by because I didn't think... I'm not sure why they needed MVLC to be involved in their launch. Right. Um, and I believe that WordPress is just free and you just use their like cloud type storage. I think I am going to ask PRS to take over our domain. Um, so there's a few things there to be worked out as well. Okay. Okay, so to move forward, we're trying to get those things out. And are you? Do you think we should only call Tom Rose, or um, should we look into someone else? Did you talk to anyone in Amesbury to find out why Pixel and Light are highly recommended, or did they, did they just write that in their response? Um, I, I think I'm, I'm abbreviating her email a little bit, but that's the gist of what she sent. Okay. It's a higher price too, but that includes the logo redesign. And then the logo is, is kind of cute, although it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, like the Flint has a drawing of their building. Right. It's just a like kind of a goofy thing. Um, but I do. I, she, I think she did. Um, she mentioned there was a lot of training, a lot of emailing and skyping um, for the people who are going to be doing the content updates. Okay. So I'll say that Pam will reach out to Tom. Mm -hmm. Last name Rose. Rose. Okay. okay. Just needs more reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. One of the hard things to determine about the price is what what else you're actually getting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the cheaper price is cheap for a reason. Right. Get very limited. Yeah. So I'll ask about support when I talk to. But the twenty thousand dollar one seemed pretty pretty high. Can't even that's imagine. that's what we're getting back in the early nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's which paid a similar, uh, you know, a, a large amount for its most recent reboot, but I don't think they went with WordPress, so that's why. You think it's which paid a similar? Amount? Sorry. <laughs> and do we come up with a? Model oh, was that that was one of our action items, right? To think no, about the tagline. Tagline. Yes. Yeah, and whether or not we want to maintain the the picture mm -hmm. of the building as our logo as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, Janet so, did say that she has a friend. So I took a picture. It's got nothing to do with, but this. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Is it a little boy reading oh. a book? Yes. Yeah, and then. Uh, a uh, quote I, that, I, that I, I've always liked in regards is um, the honey is sweet and so is knowledge, but knowledge is like the bee who made the honey. It has to be chased through the pages of a book. And that's Patricia Black up by oh. her name, right? Mm -hmm. Finney, big child author. <laughs> Children's <laughs> authors. What? Like so. It's funny, the BB Library in Mayfield has a honey pot. And, and, the and the, yeah, 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 and I think I, I think that's just a plan on to deep, but I don't know. Yeah, which just made me think of that. I like that. Yeah. 
Where is this? Uh, South Carolina. So I had to travel. <laughs> but it was the best. It was the best. It was the best uh, picture given this time of year. Mm -hmm. What we need is to see that all four parts of the season. Mm. Or it's like fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do that. I like yeah. that idea. It's pretty cool. You don't have any people. Is that Charleston? Uh, it's just north of Pauly's Island, yeah. Where is it? No, it's at my brother's house there, so. <laughs> I, just, I just saw it and go, wow, that's a really neat statue. And we could, we could hone in on the statues. Or once we get ours, we have prepared, we can take yes. a close up of that. Well, Janet suggested too, on, on that statue, there's that quote from Cicero. Yeah. And then yeah. have a library and a garden, you have everything you need. Mm -hmm. So that could certainly be. It's kind of kind of one too. We could have different quotes on each page too. Like mm -hmm. some of the. Um, some of the sites have different pictures of the library that scroll through. We could have a quote attached with each picture. And I found some of them distracting, particularly Amesbury, because it was in this weird shape. I don't know. It bothered me. It seems to scroll very slowly, too. And so I got the impression that like the page had completely loaded mm -hmm. that. So I like the <laughs> I also didn't like this. I thought this color scheme was just a little too, you know. The teen scene is yellow. The teen scene is purple. Like, mm -hmm. Just do all maybe variation shades. Yeah. Because it was echoed. I think it was echoed up here too somewhere.
Kim has done some research on two improvements as well as on the budget line. Um, Kim, do you want to talk about your plan for refreshments? Well, in, in the course of talking to the town accountant and planning the staff appreciation luncheon and clarifying what we can expect and what we cannot, um, a lot of it comes down to is it for the staff or is it for the public? And if it's for the public, we're using public monies, we're good. And she used as an example the tea and crumpets line that the council on aging have in their budget. So that just got me to thinking, if we can have refreshments for the public, wouldn't it be fun if we did say every Saturday in December, have coffee and cookies out for people doing chores and coming to the library on Saturday? And I talked to the staff at the staff meeting, and they're all fine with it. Um, Obviously, I wouldn't, if they don't feel like cleaning up coffee and all the other things they have to do, I wouldn't have put the idea any more forward than that. But they're all into it. Um, we talked to the friends about maybe rather than the mess of making coffee, just bringing our, putting our curry machine out and the friends could sell pods for a dollar and maybe even make a little money. We put up a sign that said, please enjoy your refreshments in the lobby and not in the library. So that was that was my thought. Was that it would be fun? And Pam, you're thinking if it is well received by the public in December to continue through the year? Well, maybe coffee, not not cookies right. every weekend. Right. Um, and I talked to the people at the Market Basket Bakery. They do make cookie platters, but all they do is open the tubs and put them on the platter. So I thought, well, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the tubs have 13 to 15 cookies and cost four dollars. I also looked at statistics for the past three years of Saturdays, and we officially have 95 patrons as an average Saturday traffic, but the thing about our average is that our people counters count everything. So you've got staff members coming and going, every time someone goes to the book drop, to empty the book drop, they take it over. Twice, on the way through with that. Well, it counts as one, yeah. Um, they put the flags out, that's going to count as one. And then also consider that I don't reset it when I'm here Friday, so however many times I've got it out Friday is still on Saturdays. So given that, I think 75 is a more realistic number, and I thought, or, you know, the cookies don't have to last all day. You know, your first 50 customers get a cookie, and that's good. And so, <laughs> yeah, but I thought, you know, we could mix it, mix it up each week, do mini muffins or do gingerbread or candy canes or I don't know. Are we allowed to um, bring our own? You know, one of us was to bake something? Sure. Okay. Are you allowed to play? <laughs> Not at this time, but I'm just curious if it's going to be an ongoing... Yeah, you know, to help reduce. Well, and we, you know, we did it once before. We had um, a sheet cake with a picture of the library on it during mm -hmm. uh, National Library right. Week. It just seems like, you know, once in a while, it's a fun thing to do. And people ate that a lot of, because we ate it on a Wednesday, right? When all the yeah. families yeah. were Yeah, Wednesday, story time day, there's four sets mm -hmm. of story time guests. And this should be a busy December because the A. Now we're having the author visit. The 15th, Margaret Burke will be here. And the friends are having a basket raffle. The 22nd might be not so busy, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people might be doing the rest of the signs. The staff appreciation. We don't have an event, unfortunately. The Girl uh, Scouts? I think there's a Girl Scout meeting, yeah. Yeah, so, so we should have lots we have of. We cookies. cookies. <laughs> 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 they be offended by our cookies. Um, so it should be, we should get a lot of people to see how well it goes over. Mm -hmm. And I'll put a sign, obviously, warning that there may be nuts. Yes. Yeah. I was telling you earlier, I saw, I was at a bank, um, a local community bank, and they have coffee every morning, donuts on Saturdays, and they refer to it, and it's the hub of the community, and a lot of people would come in and meet with their friends. Even if they had no banking business, right? And they would, but but it would maybe 
brought them to look, oh, look at the new CD, or, the, yeah. you know, and similarly here, we have newspapers and magazines available for reading that they can... And, and actually, someone suggested, was it you who suggested bring the newspapers over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. I think so, too. So, um, which, where specific, which budget line would it come out of? From the donations. From donations. Yeah. We don't, we don't need to vote on that, you just wanted to give us a heads up. Okay. The next issue um, is the Massachusetts Library Association's Intellectual Freedom Committee decision on um, privacy rights of minors. And Pam, I know you'll be able to describe this and the consequences well, of that. I sent around 10 pages of legalese over the weekend. I'm sure everybody got that. I have hard copies here if need be. And one thing I just ran off today, so I didn't get a chance to email, is I found a few privacy policies. And this is our privacy policy from our policy manual. So what's the issue here? We need some more expansive. The issue is that Massachusetts law, uh, MDL, Chapter 78, Section 7 states, the part of the records of a public library which reveals the identity and intellectual pursuits of a person using such a library shall not be a public record. It says person. It does not differentiate the age of the person. So when a parent comes in and says, I need to know what's on my child's account, we would be breaking this law by telling them even if we're asking them to pay for it because it's late. It's, it's the opinion that's been handed down. Can you repeat that, please? If, if a parent comes in or a guardian and says, I need to know what's on my child's account, we'd be breaking the law by telling them. Account, what, what do you mean by account? Library, library, library materials that they have currently out. Oh, okay, so what they have. Or, or what they have had out in the past, or a website they looked at, or anything. But the, when it comes into play and causes a problem for us is when a parent wants, well, I'm going to go look in his room and try and find this book for you. I need to know what I'm looking for. And if I can't find it and I have to pay for it, I want to know what I'm paying for. And it's difficult to say, mm, I'm sorry, I'm not liberty to tell you. Can you say if it's hardcover or what type of material? It's a DVD? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Um, but we can't and then, the so, so two, I, I mean, I guess two things. One is that you can see, compared to some of these other policies, I mean, it's, it's very brief. It doesn't cite the law. Um, many of the ones that I looked at online specifically address this instance. Um, one of them actually makes an exception for the parent who was going to pay the bill for the child but the others specify that it includes minors. Because the one that makes an exception is actually in violation of the law, isn't it? That's what, that's what I'm I mean, that's thinking what I got from that email. Yeah. Um, so here's another issue, and that is that in many, many, many instances, a parent's email has been put in the child's record for notices. And the staff and I would kind of go around and around this. The staff wants to do it. It saves them work having to call people. The patrons want it because it's more convenient for them to have to manage all of their family accounts in one email. But it's breaking this law. And we had, the last time we did an upgrade in Evergreen, we allowed the patrons to go in and edit their own preferences. So at that point, I kind of just threw up my hands and said, well, if they can go in and change the email themselves, I can't force them not to do it. They can do it if they want to. So that's, I mean, there's nothing to be done now because we wouldn't know which are legitimate emails and which are parental emails. But it's something that, you know, I lose sleep over. Is, are they, are they, is it true that they're automatically purged from the system once the materials are returned? Not quite true. We yeah. keep it for one more circulation in case we find, oh, there's a disc missing or... Go back to it. Yeah. 
And that's something that's done at central site, and that's you know voted on by MDLC when and how to purge. Okay, is there a way to identify the age of each each patron record? And I know that it's not as easy to report out of Evergreen, but what I'm thinking is, could we go through and identify all of our patrons who are minors and delete the email? No. Is Which, it is it tracked? Like if I, if I if you were looking at some at a patron, is their date of birth in there? Okay, so we don't even know on an individual basis. No. It's not so much an issue. It's the issue that the child, we're knowing their information. It's not like that we need to delete them. If anything, we've got to encourage them to have their own emails that the library can use. So we're contacting the correct person. Right, but. But when people come in and they come in together and they have a seven, five, and a three-year-old, they all get cards together. They all get the same email address. I mean, your three-year-old isn't going to have an email address. That's how it ends up with moms or dads or caretakers in there. Because then, when they're eighteen, they still have the same or seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, in in the case of library records, children have privacy from their parents in Massachusetts. So we don't even need to wait for the child to turn 17 and it just happens to be their parents' email. The, the three-year-old, yes. we need to protect their rights and are theoretically not allowed to let the parent know what the three-year-old is taking out. Right. Even though in practice we don't want the parent taking the book out. I know. <laughs> so in California, a living place, the intention of this law is to protect privacy of a person, not to make extra paperwork and bureaucracy for a three-year-old, <laughs> which obviously you can't, with making bureaucracy for the librarian, right. for the administrators and for the parents. In California, it was an action caused an issue. You have a policy that's written down so that if the parent comes in and says, I want to know if my, parent, my kid checked out a book on pregnancy, can you show me the record, then you enact this. It's a passive versus that. You don't actively go seek out and delete emails. You wait until someone comes to you and says, that's my problem. But, but, it's a policy. but here's my problem here. Right. My policy. Every, every, day. every day, I'm sending an email to a parent that says, come pick up this item that is now available for you, or this email, this, this item is now overdue. Please return it as soon as possible. I'm sending those titles to the parent. And this policy, I think it's pretty all, obviously, is saying you can't do that, or they're saying when someone comes in and actually asks you, you can't do that. There's a difference. That's, that's what I'm saying. What's the intention if, of the law as opposed to the, right? If, well, it's, okay, so the workaround for the workaround that one library asked specifically about and got a ruling from the public records office is if the parent says, or if whatever, if anybody says, can I see what's on this other person's account, the answer is no, but if that person asks me, I will print out a receipt, put it in an envelope, and mail it to that person. But again, the person's three, you know the parent's going to open it. I'm, it's a similar thing. I am sending notices, overdue notices, and come pick up your whole notices to a person I know is not the person whose card it is. So, the intention of the law is that is a problem, as opposed to I, I, I see it as a problem, and I've seen it as a problem all along, but, it, but as I say, once Evergreen made it so that anybody could go in and edit their own email, I can't stop you from go, from going into your kid's account and putting your email. So I, I had to let that go, even though it bothers me. And you think every library in the state that uses yeah, and and I don't think the same issue. issue. Right. I don't know, yeah. Right. I, I've been thinking I should bring it up with the executive board of MBLC and just ask, you know, is anybody else as concerned about this as I am, or did you all just let it go as <laughs> well? <laughs> but that's that's what it, that's where I think I don't I don't know what to do about it because it's there's so many emails in there that are the kids' card but go into the parents' email. And here's Eve, here's a um, 
quote from the um, opinion, a public library may not disclose records which reveal a minor's borrowing information to the minor's parent, regardless of whether the parent is paying the fine on an overdue item or the parent has signed the child's library card application form. So, I mean, I think that that's, it's pretty, it's ridiculous. And here, like, here's a, I mean, here's, it's so strict that yeah. it's okay, like, we can't even say your child has requested such and such, come pick it up. This is one policy from Broadway. By state law, all activity on a patron's card is confidential despite the age of the person. This means that children are afforded the same privacy and confidentiality rights as an adult. This means that when an item is overdue, notices are given only to the child, even though the parent is legally responsible for the actions of the minors in their households. So we're, sent, we're, we're giving, you know, it's like people used to send their overdue notices on postcards. Well, that's not private, because everybody in your household can see it. It's a similar thing. If we're just to send an emails, willy-nilly to whomever, then we're not protecting that confidentiality. Between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really an example of where it's coming to this. Yeah, mm -hmm. and most of these policies have, have a mechanism for that. Like, you giving him your card signals that you're okay with it. Right. But there are some libraries that will not without the written permission. There's a verbal incentive if you're picking up materials from mm -hmm. a person, please have their library card with you. Mm -hmm. This implies, okay, yeah. Well, they may alternatively call a library and give the person. I think that's less of an issue than the yeah. children thing. Yeah. And, and other, some libraries are more strict about that than others because every now and then you'll pull up a page of record and it'll have a note. So-and-so can pick up books for so-and-so. Like, they put it in a permanent record that I, I allow this person to get my eye. I noticed that, this one is this, um, Wayland. Wayland, they reference a PIN number, mm -hmm. they, they have a PIN number at their checking out areas, so that we, that do, we do as well. Oh, we do? Mm -hmm. In fact, that was one of the workarounds um, that one of our staff members used to say, when you're calling for overdues, mm -hmm. Debbie has an overdue, oh, what is it? I'm sorry, I can't tell you, but you can log in by using your PIN. So I can't tell you. But I can tell you how to log, log on. I'm so, going to which, it, which again is like putting it in the envelope, you knowing you're going to open it. Yeah, but, but like at that point, it. isn't it out of your hands? Like you follow the law, and then like now it's like I did everything right. Now it's up to them. So like now it's like it's not in your court kind of thing. And that's a point. And if is that the law here? Can I see this? Yeah. It, yeah. And if my six-year-old lets me know what his account number is, right. then. There's nothing you can do about that. Or if you go in and edit the email and change yeah. it. Right. In but, fact, and to, go, sure. to go <laughs> back to <laughs> Eve's point, at some point that child is going to want privacy from their parents. And I also always cite the example of a child who's in an abusive situation, mm -hmm. who's trying to figure out how to get out of it, and the abuser gets wind of it. You know, now you, you have a safety issue, not just a privacy right. issue. Right. And in an effort to protect that child, our hands have really become tied. Well, it's just I mean, servicing it's, our, it's our state law. Yeah. And, that's, yeah, and that's what we have to have behind us when we say, I really can't tell you, it would be against MGL 78 checks, section 7. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if we're going to have a policy that says that, I can't tell you what is on your three-year-old's card. Maybe one thing that we can add to our process is when a parent comes to the desk, requesting a card for their child, maybe at that point, yeah. say, you know, understand that here's, here's one of the complications. But I do think that we'll need to have some training for the staff because and on the registration forms, the parents going to react right. really about this. Of course they are. And so we need they to have the right thing very irate. You're right, and so we need to have the staff, you know, to protect the staff, we need to be able to have them explain the situation. And, and that's going to take, yeah, on, on the registration forms, the adult one has a place to write in an email. The child form does not have a place to write in an email. But the staff just loves putting them in there, and they're like, okay, do you have an email for this? So like I said, this is something we've and gone around to go in. And now they can log in yeah, right, and do it do themselves. Right. 
seems like you need a bigger policy. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, we, it right. helps irateness if you say, well, here's this long policy that's been adopted by the board. Right. At least if they're three, five pages, they're much less, just even psychologically more calm after three, right. five mm -hmm. pages of legalese than yeah. if you just say no. Right, and especially if the policy is. begins with the law. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, we are talking about reviewing our policy manual and making sure anything needs to be updated, maybe start with that one. Or put that one at least in the high priority. Um, we as in the trustees or? Yes. Okay. Is, it, is there a group call? A committee? There is. Yes. We just, we're going to address them on the agenda. I believe it's... Janet and I, and someone who has been resigned. So is that okay. Anyway. Oh, well, Henry and Janet did it last time. Yeah. So, I guess if anyone else is interested in joining Janet and I. Um, for policy. So our takeaway from from this then, Pam, is it we need an updated privacy policy that specifically states the law, and then maybe some talking points for staff so that when they're delivering, first of all, so that they know how to keep to the policy, mm -hmm. understand the implications of putting the email in. But also, um, just you know, make some talking points so that when they have to tell the parent why they can't have the information on the book that we're asking them to pay for, that they can try to diffuse that situation as quickly as possible. some of the key, more interesting handouts for each of us. Thank you. Um, actually, I have the folder right yet. And I made copies for everyone, so actually. Oh, can you get that? No, you can keep it. I didn't make it. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, but some highlights. Um, I did. Um, some of the highlights, the top pages on the trustee email, which we, I think, we, I don't know if everyone did, but we, um, they recently sent out an invitation to be part of this email list, and um, I'm trying to remember how many people, they, I think there's like 100 people already signed up for it, they said, and it's getting some good usage. Um, and it's just sort of a place where if you have a question about how other libraries have handled something, you can send an email out there, like when you know Pam throws something out to ask other directors. So, so that's there as a resource to us. The second page is literally a list of resources um, that are helpful. Um, there is a section um, in MLS where there's a whole policy collection. So. You can go and see again what other libraries are doing and adapt them to our own needs. The tip sheet for the roles, they talked a lot about different roles of trustees versus director versus the friends. <clears throat> and um, some of that is in the packet I gave you. You'll see a trustee report card, um, which is interesting. It's sort of a list of questions. They advise that each Board of Trustees kind of evaluates things as a self-evaluation each year just to make sure that we're being as efficient and as business-like as we could be. So that's kind of 
interesting too. And then there's a, um, a flowchart. Thank you, flowchart that really differentiates the Mass Library System and the Mass Board of Library Commissioners. And I know I'm still kind of cloudy sometimes on who does what, and so that um, is interesting. So when Pam's throwing around all her acronyms, we can <laughs> see what she's talking about. And then the last page is what I had mentioned, the difference in roles between director and trustees and friends, and making sure that everyone's doing um, doing what they're responsible for and not stepping on each other's toes and just working together as best that we can. Um, some of the other things that they mentioned that were interesting was there's um, the there's something called Mass Library Aid and they have a small library aid and that's based on communities with 10,000 10,000 populations of 10,000 and under. And they actually have grants for training staff and, and um, different things like that. I wasn't aware of them. So they just award, announced their awards this past September, and so they won't be doing it again until next September, but that's maybe something to look into if there's resources and money out there for us. Um, we should probably see if there's something that we can use. Um, they also mentioned that they're going to be updating the trustee handbook, which handled all of us when we started. They're in the process of updating that and are welcoming anyone's comments. So if you've read through the handbook, if something's confusing, or if you think they should add something, they're saying by all means, it's um, April Mazza, who's email address is on the first page of this. Um, she said definitely email her your suggestions. And otherwise it was really, it was pretty neat. They seem to have someone there from just about every library in this region. And um, I'd say there were about 30 people or so. It was a good meeting. So Pam, can I leave these on the whole shelf for the other trustees? Who are you going to send Jake, Scott, and Jan. Jan, thank you. <coughs> There's one too. Red? I'll make an extra one. Um, okay, on to subcommittee reports. The outreach committee um, has two big projects going on. The first one, the vote requests, one on in memory of Michael Shares, and the e-readers have arrived, and Pam is working on getting those all registered and set up. There's three of them. One is going to be um, primarily to hold periodicals, because recently, is it Newsweek? Newsweek has said that they're not producing paper copies anymore, so I've got the idea that maybe we should have one just for periodicals so we can start having the Wall Street Journal and other newspapers that we just can't physically get here. Um, the other one will be primarily one that circulates um, with adult material on it. And then there's one for the kids' room, which will have um, children's literature on it. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, games and apps. And right. Or interactive books and mm -hmm. things like that. So there are three, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're all the same kind. Of gun. Yeah. There's two candles, and the kids want to candle fire because that's how you get the apps on there. It's kind of a little browser. Okay. So mm -hmm. the next steps for that are to actually load the books that we want to um, to have loaded in them. A lot of books, as you may or may not know, are free, and we have some we book two hundred dollars left over in that request budget, is that right? <clears throat> I'm going to talk to Mr. Share's family and just give them an update, but also get some information regarding his preferences so we can at least have some material um, loaded that are related to his hobbies or if he had a favorite author. 
and then later in this meeting we'll be reviewing the e-reader policy which we'll have in place before we're allowed and Pam is planning um, some training for the staff to make sure that they are all familiar with using the e-readers. One of the issues that came up while we were researching the policy was um, uh, Brockville, which is actually in Ontario. I don't know if you realize that when we were looking into it. Um, it's a Canadian library, and they had this really good sort of disclaimer about um, sort of how e-readers are evolving, and you know, technology is evolving. And so when I called them to ask if we could borrow that paragraph, we were able to get some information from them on their implementation and how, um, in addition to the positive that, good that you're doing by introducing your community to e-readers, you then have this community that's clamoring for information on e-readers and you become the experts. So they warned us that we're going to want to make sure that the people at the desk are able to answer questions and help them because as they decide they love e-readers and get their own, they're going to come in and want us to train them on how to use them. So, And this happened, I can tell you, last year, you know, before the holidays when everybody was trying to decide which one should I buy, they asked the library. And then after they give them as gifts, they bring them in and say, how do I use this in the library? So, right. So, so that will be ongoing. The other project we have going on is the Young Adult Writer Program, and we're getting tons of support from um, Margaret Clarity, who's an English teacher at Triton High School. We produced a survey that she distributed through Triton, and we got over 200 responses back. The, and basically, we're asking students what their preferences were, what they would be interested in writing, and when they were available for programming. So the results support us having a college essay writing workshop, which Margaret recommends we just put off until the fall, because that's when that'll be on the key time. So, so we're moving forward with that, but it's sort of on the back burner. Also, um, there was enough interest in poetry and slam poetry that we're hoping to put some workshops together to happen after the December Poetry Slam. And then, if, when all of that goes great, um, and with an April Poetry Slam. So those programs maybe um, have someone who is a poet or is, is a poetry teacher come in and run a, a workshop so that people can work on their own material. There are theater groups that train people on reciting poetry or performing poetry, and um, possibly having a favorite poem night in the community. And um, Pam and I attended a sort of web webinar, webinar on um, with some different libraries who've done that in the past and got some tips on that. Um, some of the budget that we have, the request will be used as a stipend for the facilitators, and then also to purchase materials. So, so right now we kind of know where we're going. We need to start researching who those facilitators will be, and we hope to roll roll out the programs from January to April or May, with the college essays coming in the fall. And please, everyone, come to the poetry slam December. 13 yeah. at 6. Six. Six. It's going to be very exciting. Michelle Pettis has a on the market. position. She's a writing teacher at the Yeah, I tried Oh, hi, so thank you. She's a true specific writing teacher. That's my point. And you indicated over 2,000 responses. 200. Did I say 2,000? No. No, you said 200. Thank you. <laughs> 200. But we were able to get all the results into Excel, so then we can cut it any way we want. So we can take, you know, just students who are interested in a specific genre and say, right, when would they come? And so we'll have some really specific information on for scheduling and sort of overlap on who's interested in different genres. So it's, 
was really thrilled that she was able to get that many responses for us. It's, it's really great. So the next <laughs> item on the agenda is the planning committee. And I think for the long range plan, at the last meeting, we had approved the, the plan for fiscal year 14. And I don't think we had anything left to do on that. Except that between now and October 1st of next year, we need to create a whole we need a new five-year plan. So the planning committee probably needs to have a meeting to kick that off. So the plan would be would start the following July first. Okay. So it would be effective July one, two thousand fifteen to two thousand twenty. Two thousand fourteen, because that's actually when fiscal year fifteen starts. Okay. Okay. And do we have a report from the building and grounds? Which I think is John. <laughs> which is, is it you and Jake or just you? Oh, I, I enjoyed with them. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. That's right. I've, I've, in regards to the painting, I've told a couple of painters to come by and take a look uh, at it. I don't think anyone's been by. Not as that I know of. Yeah. They don't contact me. Yeah. The, um, you know, I've contacted three different people as a start. I just think they're finishing out their, job, their outside jobs now. And they'll come by to see it because I wasn't like there's a rush because it's we're we're yeah. taking next summer anyways, but yeah, that's a good point. They're probably raising against the weather to yeah. finish what they've got. And I guess I'd just take this to, to everyone. We talked about the trim, but as I was going through looking it over, there are spots on the where the paint is chipping. If you're gonna have someone here doing the trim. I know it's more expensive, but you might as well just do the whole. It might, it might just be time, yeah. yeah. Do the whole building, you know. We definitely look a lot better at the town hall too, so I don't know if that's a, <laughs> a factor in all this, but we definitely the trim is definitely fading and chipping, and other spots are too. So. Did we talk about whether or not the town could get a better rate for having the buildings <laughs> together, town hall, and library, and the annex? I mean, if they're going to paint the end, yes. Yeah, you would think they would. I, I, don't, I honestly don't know. Okay. All right, so we'll just keep waiting for quotes on that. The problem with the annex is they have lead paint that has to be treated totally different, oh. a lot more expensive. That's a very good Yeah, it's not that properly for whoever paints it could receive a $30,000 environmental fine. So these all the buildings, like the church. Next door, very expensive proposition. Um, Who's going to be liable? To so just letting the lead paint chip off is okay, but <laughs> it's no yeah, because it's that. actually falling down right. to the ground, right. whereas you're causing dust to be airborne. So mm -hmm. you guys need to have masks. You have to have it enclosed. The ground has to be covered as well. And they can only do a, uh, so many hours one day if they wait. I think it's three days, I may be wrong on that, before they go back and start spraying and scraping again. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the Parsons building we live in that definitely has lead paint. Mm -hmm. uh, come think of the church itself, that was redone about seven or eight years ago. Right. The pine trees and the weather just needs to be painted already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so we'll stay right in the end. We will offer to get quotes for them. Okay, 
so the disaster recovery subcommittee report is next. Okay, so as I indicated, I updated the command center, which I may not consider adjusting based upon Chief Grodrick's comments with regard to town hall, the center school, dynamics. so as of now, I put in fire department and police department, um, police department being first, because I just assumed that there was more space there. <laughs> yeah. Um, sounds like that was a correct assumption. Um, one of the items I was going to ask for tonight, um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, this is really going to be something that I probably just need to work with, um, with Pamela. So, um, of course, I clipped this all together now. But interestingly, the portion that I was going to ask for or give to you, and I'll just give you the sheet, and you can just plug it in maybe, um, is insurance information. I'll find it maybe too. But I probably wouldn't have it. I'd have to give it to Amy. So yeah, we can, yeah, and then I can just you know as we get these items, we can put them in. Um, one of the pieces, one of the, the bigger pieces, is really figuring out who our disaster response plan, disaster response team is going to be, um, and determining. I did ask for the staff meeting. And nobody, I didn't say you know everybody raise your hand, but I said think about this and let me know, and nobody has. All right. Maybe that I can, yeah, can I can follow up bring that. it up again. I mean, because I wouldn't want it to all be trustees, just because I think the staff is more familiar mm -hmm. with the materials, uh, locations of materials. Um, yeah. Because once we just establish the team, then we can kind of prioritize who will be called and what their responsibilities will be. Um, and not that I'm going to hold up, but then one of the next major components is um, inventory and what we have um, and determining like, similarly the prioritization of, of salvaging the items, what comes first, you know, and depending upon, I think, the type of natural disaster, I'm assuming that we're in the midst of, it's a flood, you know, maybe there are certain things that can't be salvaged. We have to discuss um, how that's going to work. Um, and put it into the plan. So, and if then, um, kind of analysis will be will be put into place. So, I'll give Pam the insurance information tonight. I'm still going through and finding any statewide emergency services, and I've plugged in some numbers for that as well. Um, they sent they sent out a million so contact information before Hurricane Sandy. So I was just forwarding them to Erin. <laughs> yep, yep. So I put in some of those. Some I didn't put in. I didn't think they were. We don't need all mm -hmm. of them, um, but they're good to have. Um, so um, where appropriate, I'm adding it in, and where there's spots. And some of the information, there may not be a specific spot, but there's another area we can kind of plug things in. And I'm doing that now, but once we're done, I'm just filling out all the little sections. You compile the report and print it out, or compile it for you and print it out. So it may seem awkward, so I can kind of tweak it as we get to that, but that's great. Um, so that's it. The next subcommittee report is policy, and as mentioned, um, we've worked on a policy for the circulation of the e-readers, and I think this went out with Pam's packet, but does anyone need a copy of it? Has everyone had an opportunity to read it? I know it's ruminating. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I sent it. Did I? Yeah. 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 and then asked to sign the agreement on the back, acknowledging that they have received it, that they understand the, um, that it only circulates for two weeks, which is different than, I think, anything else we have here, right? It's because DVDs are one week, and so it's the only thing that will circulate for two weeks. But mostly so that they have acknowledged that they are aware of the replacement fees, that they're responsible for it. Um, I know some of the libraries we looked at don't, they own e-readers, but they don't circulate them. And I just don't think that's, 
I think we want to have them circulate, but you know, it's a lot more expensive than if someone loses a book or damages a book. And then you'll see that little please note at the bottom is the section that we borrowed from Robert Bell. The, the fee for replacing an e-reader somebody permanently well, loses it or damages it, is this, this is a, uh, not going to cover for the shipping and handling? The price here is that? Shipping and handling There's no charge for that. I know it says that they're going to have a case, but they're going to have a uh, screen cover too. It's like so that they're touching with their fingers, because I believe the Kindle Fire is a touch screen. Yeah, so, and, and in fact, I realized once it got here, it needed an anti-glare yeah. screen too. You can go get like a ghost armor with the North Shore Mall. Mm -hmm. I think it's $20 for the front screen, mm -hmm. but I mean, it works good. It doesn't peel off of just once you stick on. Yeah. What is it called? Ghost armor. Works really good. And then once you do it once, it's expensive, but if you go back there, it's like, you know, it's been a while and you're getting it replaced, it's only five bucks. Oh, so right. it's cheaper once you go back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I had, I had put a little note on that case, too. I'm not sure what exactly they're going to circulate in. It might be a bag. Okay. Because there's going to be the power cord. I guess that's it. But so, yeah, there's two items. Well, the adapter to it, too. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, yeah. to charge it and yeah. USB to. Right. Okay. And I'm, 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 I'm curious about the two weeks, too. Why, why is it not three weeks? <clears throat> two weeks seem to be what other libraries did. Um, I assumed, perhaps incorrectly, that, you know, they developed this and maybe that was their experience. My Other libraries in MVLC? Or just in general? Some of them. Most of the ones I looked at were in the Okay, state. just because so right on the policy. we had that policy, we had that director's policy I committee see. trying trying to make everything consistent right. for, within the consortium. So I'll check and see. Okay. okay. Because before it was like, well, this library circulates music CDs for two weeks, and this library circulates music CDs for two I did see ridiculous. I did see some libraries that only circulated them for one week, which I don't know that that would give you enough time to if someone's if someone's borrowing it to read a book. I don't think that's well. That's give them enough that's the rationale. Take a trip. Are they borrowing it just to play with it before they buy one, or right. are they borrowing it to read a book or go on a trip? Well, I, mean, right. I feel like if you're borrowing it to read a book, you're not borrowing it for one book. Otherwise, you just borrow that one book. Yeah, you, you're probably gonna go on like a trip like we talked about last mm -hmm. month and like read maybe one or two books. So. Mm -hmm. Two weeks would probably be good to yeah. cram in two books at a sitting. I thought one was too short, and then, you know, and this will probably be adjusted shortly after we start circulating them when we see how popular they are. But the other side is if we make it three weeks and we have a very long hold list, that's, that's going to take it longer for us to get through the hold Go through list. Go through select queue, that, yeah. Too. And that's probably why it was right. shorter. And as you and I had mentioned, with the with the one that we're holding back for periodicals, we may find if our whole list gets much too long, that one we may end up circulating, mm -hmm. at least while we try to go through the whole list. So, and I haven't thought about how we're going to do the whole list. It's going to have to be a manual hold. Because, yeah, because these are only available for browsers. Right, because if we make them holdable and evergreen, they are all, well, can they be, is holdable different than requestable? I'll have to look into that. Okay. So now, if we're going to, if we're going to add ghost armor to the, to the readers that are going out, for circulation, do we want to add that to the replacement? Cost? And you know, I was wondering too. These prices are going to be in flux. You know, next week it might not be 174 for a Kindle Fire. I mean, there there might just need to be some kind of mechanism in this that I can adjust the price without having to come back to the board and have the policy reapproved again. Yeah, or if it's not like a total loss and you know it's only like a you know a minor part that you can send back to whoever makes Kindle and see mm -hmm. you can just put in there for uh, current rate. Yeah. So, some somehow yeah. that needs to be for replacement or repair. Mm -hmm. Right.
Yeah, which is even as simple as replacement fees are as follows as of this date or something like that. Okay. Do you agree with that? Is that enough to say that we will be changing this in the future? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm assuming when you bought the readers to you got some sort of warranty thing in case the thing just bleeps out because they do it all the time. And you send it out and just send you a brand new one, brand new fresh, which means you wouldn't necessarily have to charge oh. the patron themselves. Because they do, they just sometimes just go, I'm fine. Well, I guess in that case, if it was a defective, yeah, we wouldn't charge the patron. But how would we know that the patron didn't right. drop it in the toilet? And, and well, so they, <laughs> they, they, some of you send it back, they say, oh yeah, this was that. Okay, the, 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 we manufactured them incorrectly. We oh. will send you a new one because this is we messed up. Mm -hmm. oh. Amazon. So you might add anything about that. The sentence on mm -hmm. as deemed necessary by mm -hmm. the library. Mm -hmm. so people know what being we're, not covered being under, punitive. we're not covered under warranty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Was on the policy committee. Lee and Chan and Eve. Is that two? And Eve worked on this as well. So. Okay, then I'll make those updates and bring this back for December. When will these uh, devices be available? Um, well, Michelle mentioned earlier, um, before they go out to the public, they have to go home with every staff member for a while, let them play with them. Um, so... January, February, then? I, could, I mean, I could start putting content on them any time. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, I want each frontline staff person to take each one home for a week or two. So, however long that takes. So, we have two regular Kindles, mm -hmm. I think one Kindle. Yes. And the plan at this point in time is to put periodicals and other resources like that on one to use in the library mm -hmm. and to put just books and popular materials on the other one to circulate it on. Gotcha. And as with this disclaimer, that may change at any time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's, you know, we're being forward and right. it's good. It's, it's we really like me. As we move forward reviewing the whole policy manual, one thing that they had mentioned at the policy meeting that I went to last year was to make sure that each, and I don't have one this one, and so I'll add that too, make sure each policy has a date set in the future that you'll review it so that you don't know, get where we are now or that it hasn't been looked at in a while. And different, different parts like your mission and your, you know, some of the things that are governed by the town aren't going to change as frequently, but then some things like your e-reader policy will. And one thing that Pam and I were discussing was how long do we set on this? Like, is it six months? Does it change in three months? <laughs> what do you think the frequency should be? Yeah. And I, well, I think does, initially it's it going to be much say that may be required to change at any time without any notice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing that I will be adding to each policy as we go through them. Um, and another policy, the customer service policy that Aaron did so much work on, um, we kind of, that sort of had gone to a place where the staff was reviewing it and making their comments on it, and then I think it just sort of fell by the wayside. So that's one that's sort of high on the list as well that we want to review and maybe finally approve that one add that to our policy manual. I think the review should be at least annual, if not. For annual. the whole book you mean? The whole thing. Yeah, that's what they've been recommending. Yeah. You know, and maybe we don't need to update, but at least review. Okay, so on my action items, I'll have to update the replacement costs of the policy, of the e-reader policy, and then um, we can work together, Aaron, the policy committee can bring you into the loop if you want on the customer service policy. And I think sure. Pam, that was left with, I think Hermaine and Rob had done a review on that, so we probably want to pull up the most recent copy and 
share with Amy. Mm -hmm. okay. So we can aim for December to have an updated e-reader and an updated customer service policy. Those will be our next two. Friends didn't have a meeting this month. Um, there were some people traveling and they didn't have a forum, so they didn't have a meeting. However, Pam and I met with Nancy Judge, there, who's their president, and um, she gave us an update. Do you, I had texted her, and I don't know if she got confirmation from Governor's Academy on the chili cook off. Have you heard that? Um, a final date. For the nine. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the question I got from her. Was was there something pending? I thought she just needed to go back to to confirm the date. I'm not oh, that's right. She like she put in the application, but she right. hadn't gotten right. the official word from yeah. So mm -hmm. so the things that they have that the friends are working on is first the chili cook will be at Governor's Academy in March. I think they're aiming for the nine, but I don't know. I don't have confirmation on that, so that could change. They're still working on a corporate appeal letter, which will be going out to all the businesses in Raleigh um, shortly. The first annual Friends Basket Raffle will kick off this Saturday. Um, individuals and some Raleigh businesses have donated baskets. They're, it's, Collectively, um, there's over a thousand dollars worth of prizes, and so there'll be three weeks of buying raffle tickets, and then the drawing is December 15th. Um, again, they had voted that they would um, co-sponsor the staff appreciation lunch with us, and I'm very thankful for them that they're going to sponsor the author visit on December 8th when Matt Tavares gets here, who comes here. And I think that that's all I had going. I can't think of anything else that they shared with us. So, we've worked our way through the agenda. Does anyone have any other issues in your business? Okay. So it's a sh much shorter list of action items. I think they're all fans. <laughs> Pam, you're going to look in the library to find a spot for the 9-11 display. Um, we all have to look about signing these letters for Rob and Joe and David. Pam will call Tom Rose regarding the website. And we will have refreshments on Saturdays in December. Is that the National What do you have? It's okay. kind of going. Um, the policy committee will, dra oh, will draft a privacy policy, which reflects the, the um, new opinion on the law. We'll update the e-reader policy for replacement costs, and we'll finalize the customer service policy. Um, do you guys think we should move the customer service policy to January just because of the holidays in December? That's a lot of homework for us all to get all those policies going out to you. What do you guys say? I mean, Amy and, um, was her man and Rob now? Amy and, was the other individuals? Yeah, Delia, go take a look at it. Interesting. Just, just Amy. Okay, so, I mean, unless she has any comments that were, would impact it a lot to change it, I don't know. I don't know if much work needs to be done. No. I honestly, okay. I don't, I don't remember why it stalled. Yeah. There was some question that we were going to come back next month, and maybe the person who was going to do it wasn't there or something. But somehow it just fell. Right. I guess I would ask you: Do you think we should wait then and focus on the other ones? Oh, let me take a look at it and okay. and I'll see. Well, as an action item. We can work on the customer service policy, but we may not have it ready for approval in December. But the privacy policy and the replacement and the um, e-reader policy 
we should have, and then the planning committee will kick off a long range planning team. And that may that probably won't happen before this month, the December meeting, I would think. I, I made a note to schedule a planning meeting in January. Just because okay. like people just get busy now. Might as well wait till January. All right, then if there's nothing else, does anyone have a... Should we maintain, I'm sorry, the tagline um, for all of us to continue to brainstorm ideas for a tagline and logo? Or do you want to... And anyone who wants to walk around the building picturing where a display might be, please feel free, your input is welcome. Okay. I'll change that. Sorry. That's okay. Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. To to adjourn at 9.28. Okay, I'll second it. John seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you.